Well, the Child Time Pod decided to respond to another video, but before I get into this, I want to talk about respect and how big I am on respect. One of the things that you're not going to do is you're not going to call me girl. I don't call you boy, so you're not going to call me girl, all right? All right. And you have the nerve and audacity to ask me, how do I know what's going on in other countries? How do you know where I've been? You have no idea. And to sit here and act like plane tickets are a million dollars, plane tickets are not expensive. And if you know about military hops, then you know that they're not expensive. And for those of you that have something to say about my father, my father taught me the definition of true patriotism. When he became a first sergeant, he continued to interact with the people in his community. He gave back. He was a little league coach. He helped with the soccer teams. He participated in Meals on Wheels. He was a true patriot. So the first thing this individual said was women are being added to the draft. And we'll see how these women respond. Well, the thing is, 17.3% of our active duty is women. It's made up of women. 21% of our National Guard is made up of women. That women are being dra could possibly be drafted is not a shock. Women have been in war since Harriet Tubman, so I'm sure we'll be fine. And as I said in my last video, no one's saying that you have to stay put. It would be nice if you could. If you could weather the storm and, you know, exercise resilience and build those skills that adults build, that would be great. But no one's saying that you have to stay. We're not going to sit here and say that universities who largely rejected female applicants are made for women. Princeton and Yale didn't even admit women in, as undergraduate students until 1969. Brown University in 1971, Dartmouth in 1972. Columbia University didn't even admit women until their undergraduate program until 1983. You are right. There are reasons why men are underperforming. But those reasons have nothing to do with women. According to research, men are more likely than women to point to factors that have more to do with personal choice. Roughly a third of men without a bachelor's degree say a major reason they don't complete college is that they just didn't want to. And you question my use of poor. People that make $36,000 are poor. I don't care how you feel about the word. The definition of poor and poverty, those are two different things, but I see you're mixing them up. Poor means having an income level lower than a specific or normal standard, and I'll tell you what that standard is in a second. And poverty means being extremely poor or lacking the means of subsistence. So yes, a person that's making $36,000 is poor because the average personal income of an individual living in the USA is $63,000. The average median income in the US is $44,000. And for all of you veterans or soldiers that come to my page talking about you all get freebies, you all get housing and that makes a difference. Well, the reason why you get housing is because that's welfare. The government knows that you don't make enough to take care of yourself. Just like they would give someone food stamps, because they can't take care of themselves, they would give you all free housing and, you know, tax breaks at the PX because you all are not making enough money. And another thing, you tend to always want to move the goalpost. So now we're talking about humanitarian aid that the federal government has given to other countries has nothing to do with someone's individual choice. If you want change at the federal level, go and run for office. And by saying, why would men want to defend something that trashes them constantly? You are proving my point. Someone that badmouths their country is unpatriotic. You're talking about how your taxes go to the government. Yes, that's the federal government. We're talking about communities. Communities are at a local level, at a personal level, not a federal level. Women pay taxes too, so what's your point? The difference is women are spending their money in the communities that they live in. Not only are they paying taxes, but they're staying put in their country, largely, taking care of the communities that they live in. And as far as passport bros, the original passport bros being military, I didn't say that, you did. You refuse to answer my questions, and you continue to talk to me in emotions. We can't have a logical discussion with emotions. You wanted to talk to me how women are having children and these children don't have fathers. Well, they did have fathers. Where are they?
women are not parthenogenic beings. These children that are growing up in single parent households have the ability to have two parents. Their fathers are just not stepping up to the plate. Just like in Vietnam, while the men left their responsibilities and returned to the United States, we have the same problem happening on our own soil, where men are having children and they're abandoning their own children. So it's not a women issue. You mentioned women having children with multiple men. Well, there are also men having children with multiple women. So what's your point? The point is fatherless families are more likely to raise children in poverty. And before one of your subscribers comes to my page and says that these men left Vietnam because they were made to, they were given orders. Who gave those orders? It wasn't a woman. Like you said, military men did bad. Military men did bad. Well, here in the United States, civilians did bad. Civilians did bad. Elliot Roger was a civilian. Dylan Roof is a civilian too. And so is Chris Watts. Chris Watts is a civilian. Those are just to name a few. Men did bad. You also said that women in third world country, they know what they're doing. You're right. Women in those third world countries are disproportionately affected by poverty. But you're right. Those women do know exactly what they're doing. But so do their countries and the UN. Those foreign governments are allowing divorce in Thailand and the Philippines too. Let's just call passport bros what it actually is. It's just a new name for mail order marriages. And guess what? The mail order marriage divorce rate is 41%. The divorce rate in America is 45%. Not much of a difference. You asked, who said that women should run communities and lead them to? Well, when you leave your community to go to another country, who do you think's running those communities? I know you don't think it's the children running the communities. It's women running the communities. Women taking those leadership roles and raising those families and doing things that men refuse to do. Let's talk about the infidelity rate of servicemen. Over 70% of cheating servicemen filed for divorce during the deployment cycle. However, military families do not experience a higher rate of infidelity than those in civilian families, which is estimated to be about one third of the population. Infidelity is one of the leading causes of divorce. Men are being unfaithful and women are not standing for it. On a typical day, there are more than 20,000 calls placed to DV hotlines. 45% of female SA victims were essayed by an intimate partner. Every nine seconds in the US, a woman is assaulted or beaten. DV is an epidemic, no matter what statistics you look at. Yet, as a society, we often close our eyes to it. One in four women have been victims of severe PV by an intimate partner. These are women that are married to these men. These are women that are dating these men, are engaged to these men. These women are not going to stay in relationships where they are mistreated, period, the end of the story. And I do believe you have uh, mixed up the definition of courage and desperation. But from your definition of what's happening with you all alone, it's it speaks to desperation. And what I say, I want to be very, very clear with this. When you say women's behavior here in the United States has led us to go to these other countries, that is not courage. That is desperation. When you feel like you can't get what you need to get accomplished somewhere else, that you feel the need that you have to go somewhere else, that is desperation. That is not courage. Well, you all can go where you want to go and do what you want to do and trust that real women are not pressed about you. We are in happy marriages with modern men and we have the right to speak on matters that we decide to speak on. You don't tell us what to do. You do what you want to do and we're going to do what we want to do. Okay. Okay. Our modern men, they understand that responsibility is a two-way street. They don't run from hard times. They build resilience and have the skills necessary to have strong, happy relationships and strong, happy communities. They don't cry about how they had to make tough decisions out of desperation. But I do understand that desperation is a cry for help. So here are my words of encouragement. 
True confidence comes from within. Don't let the opinions of others, including women, the women that you say you don't want, dictate your worth. Focus on self-improvement. Chase your ambitions and strive for personal growth. When you believe in yourself, embrace your authentic self, and follow your own path, you'll attract the right people who truly appreciate and respect you. You've got this. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Bye!